you desire. As you desire. Stop right there, outsider. The Dalish have camped in this spot. I suggest you go elsewhere, and quickly. I find that hard to believe. What business could we Dalish possibly have with a group like yours? Seeing as you are obviously no simple trespasser, I will leave it to the Keeper to decide the importance of your business. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Hmm. I see we have guests. Who are these strangers, Mithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. I understand. But this one claims to have important business with our people. I see. Tell me, stranger. What business could you possibly have with us? We have our own issues we must deal with, as you can see. You might have simply said so to begin with. Masiranus Mithra, you may return to your post. Manuvinen Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zaprian, the Keeper of this clan, its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? I guide my fellow Dalish, and they follow my word out of respect. But I would still prefer to know with whom I am speaking. Manners. From a Shemlin. Interesting. What might be your mission here? Have you come to spread news of the Blight? I had already sensed the corruption spreading in the South. The existence of the Blight is not news to me. I would have taken the clan north by now had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. Yes, it seems like you've had your own troubles. What are the odds? I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago, as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us. 
And though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak. Even with all our magic and healing skill, we will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. But we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry. There was a time in Ferelden's history when werebeasts roamed the lands in great numbers. Spirits possessed animals and turned them into horrific monsters. The humans warred against and destroyed these creatures. No doubt their tales of those days grow ever more inaccurate. Flemeth tells tales of such a time. Packs of possessed wolves akin to abominations roaming the land. It was a terrible age, now long past. The werebeasts are not all gone from this land, and the ones that stalk the Brazilian forests are proof of this. They are savage and unrelenting. They need no reason to attack anyone. What is curious, however, is the ambush. We expect werewolves to be no more cunning than a rabid wolf. The ambush suggests a level of intelligence we've never seen before. I doubt that. The very curse that is in their blood fills them with an unreasoning rage that precludes any true thought. The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that, that would be no trivial task to retrieve. I would not ask such a thing of anyone. You asked, did you not? Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. There is no guarantee that this will work, as I suspect, but it's the only hope we have left. From whom? The children of the stone? The Shemlin? Do you truly think they have time to spare for us? We would assist with the Blight, of course, and you would have our gratitude. This attitude has been burned into our souls after long years of slavery and oppression. It is not personal, but very well. I will remind my people of the danger you will undertake on our behalf. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin, allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. Then I suggest you see Master Verathorn. I will instruct him to put aside some supplies for you the kind that the hunters use. Make them quick, if you please. I have much to do here. My apprentice Lanaya or Sayrel, the clan's storyteller, could provide you with answers just as easily. Watch for the white wolves. They are his eyes and ears in the forest. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. Please leave that be. If you have need of equipment, I am sure Master Verathorn can help you. 
Please do not lie to me. I find it most unbecoming. How do they move these things through the forest? Do the trees just get out of their way or what? I trust there are no hard feelings about my questioning of you when you arrived. We Dalish must protect ourselves from trouble at all times. These days, very little to tell the truth, for we have established a fearsome reputation amongst the Shenlin. We must still be vigilant, however. Not that I would expect an outsider to understand, but there you have it. We do what we must. You might have just told me you were a Grey Warden and saved me the grief, though I suppose I can hardly blame your caution. But I wish you good fortune with your task. Dareth Shiral. So you are the Grey Warden who is supposed to save us? I never thought I would hear of an outsider who would ever do anything for us. As you desire. At your service. Of course. I didn't know them for very long, but I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? Was Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. <laughs> 
Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow. It doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. <laughs> I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... Until... Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but it just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his that I could take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. And so I shall. What are you doing? You've warped the wood completely. Did you leave it out in the rain? No, Master Ferrothorn. I, uh, I think I just used too much heat. You're not smelting ore like a Durgenlin. This is living wood. It requires patience and delicate hands, not more heat. My actions bring me sorrow, Master Ferrothorn. And so they should. Truly the art will be lost to us forever at this rate. Throw away your dead wood and start anew, and I shall speak to our guest. Now then, please forgive my distraction, stranger. Is there something that you need? Yes, yes, the Keeper sent word that you might ask me for such. I took the liberty of assembling some goods that our hunters use. I notice you've already found the chest I placed it in. Feel free to sort through and take whatever you found there, if you've not done so already. I have nothing left that the clan could spare, but we do have goods that we were going to bring to the Shemlin villages to barter with. I'm the clan's craftsmaster. It's my responsibility to learn what I can of the ancient elven arts of shaping wood and ore. In truth, we Dalish know little of the art compared to what we once did. And even what we know has taken us many lifetimes to achieve. There is wood that, if treated properly, is as hard as steel but far lighter. It grows only in this forest. Ironbark. The Keeper has forbidden us from entering the forest to collect the wood. This means I cannot make our finest crafts for years to come. I would be hesitant to ask it of you, but if you should come across Ironbark, I suppose there would be no harm in gathering some. It is blue and very distinctive. You can only harvest the bark which has fallen off the tree from age. Now, if you find some... Bring it to me, and I will craft it for you.
I excel in making blades from the iron bark, or, or perhaps a breastplate. Provided there's enough wood, that is. That would please me. So long as our hunters come first. I am no merchant, but let us trade. Perhaps there's something here which will be of value to you. Of all the... Indeed. I'm Darren Etitian, stranger. I am Athras. I hope the others have not been too harsh in their treatment of you. That is very generous of you. Most would assume we are unkind as a rule, and that is not the case. Especially not to a Grey Warden. But we have lost much, and it is easy to forget simple niceties at such a time. I understand you will search for the wolves in the Brazilian forest. I would join you, but Zathrian has forbidden me. We are banned from entering the forest now. I have more cause than most, but I will not disobey my keeper. That is a tale I am not sure I should tell an outsider. Surely you have greater concerns than my problems, stranger. It's odd to talk so freely with a stranger, but perhaps you can help me. My wife, Denila, and I both fought the werewolves in the ambush. She was injured so gravely, the curse spread rapidly in her. Zathrian fought hard to ease her pain, but there was little he could do. 
And though he says that Denila is dead, he will not let me see her. Her body. I am beginning to believe she became a werewolf. And that it is being kept from me so I do not go chasing after her. If I could just know if Denila is alive or what happened to her, then I could be at peace. I have an amulet made by our craftsmen. It's not much, but I would be happy to give it to you in return for any news. As you desire. Who comes? Oh, I beg your pardon, stranger. I was so busy attending to the Hala, I did not hear your approach. My name is Alora. I am the master herder in charge of caring for the Hala. Not as exciting as being a Grey Warden, but the Hala are vital to us. They are the noble beasts that pull our Aravel, what humans call land ships. They are our companions and our guides. We ride the Hala, but never with reins or a saddle. It is the Hala who decide where to lead us, and our privilege that they take our Aravel with them. In return, it's the herder's job to speak to the Hala and care for their needs. It's a bond of friendship, and not servitude. I fear she may have been bitten during the werewolf attack. I have tried speaking with her, but she is too agitated for me to understand. The curse would not affect her as it would us, but it would still be lethal, and it may prove contagious to the other Hala as well. I can find no wound on her, but if she's truly ill, then... then I will have to put her out of her misery, for her sake as well as that of the others. I don't know. Do you have any skills that might help her? 
If you do, I would be grateful. No. No, I'm sorry. She isn't calming any more around you than she is for me. And? What do you think? I am glad you attempted it regardless. I will watch her for a while longer and see if her condition changes. I am grateful for your assistance, friend. Andaran Atitian outsider. I am Gaina. Is there something you need from me? I am not sure what I can tell you, but I shall try. Master Verathorn should have what you need. Seek him out at the forge. You should speak to Lanaya. She's the Keeper's first and knows much of such questions. You would be best to speak to Seyrel. He is our storyteller and knows far more of such tales. Zathrian? He has been our keeper since long before my parents' parents were born. What could you wish to know about him? He keeps us safe, and he keeps the knowledge of our people safe, so we may bring it to all of our people one day. The ways of our ancestors, of course from the time of Arlathan, before the human empire enslaved our people. From the other clans, and from the artifacts we uncover in our travels. Everywhere the old empire was, so went their slaves. Pieces of our past lie everywhere. To the Flat Ears, those who live with the humans. When we have a new homeland to settle in, we shall teach all elves the ways they have forgotten. Yes. I don't know. Very old. It is said that Zathrian may be one of the first to become as our ancestors were long ago. Immortal. We... we all live longer than the Flat Ears, the elves who live with humans. The Keepers even more so because of their knowledge of the old ways. Why Zathrian differs from the others, I do not know. Perhaps he has been blessed by the Creators. Of course. Does your maker need to come down from the heavens and speak out loud for you to believe in him? There is little harm in my belief that our own gods watch over us from the heavens, full of hope for our future. Then may the creators bring you fortune.
I'm Darren Atishan Grey Warden. My name is Lunaya. I am Zathrian's first, what you might call an apprentice, perhaps. I've been studying under the Keeper all my life. I am a bit curious of the outside world. Do you mind if I ask you a question or two? I hear the human cities are very large. Thousands upon thousands of souls all packed together in their houses. Is that true? No, I could never leave the clan. My duties here are important to my people, and to me. No doubt, I would not even find my way. I try to imagine those of our people living in such a place, surrounded by walls of stone and indifference. It is a difficult thought. Being accustomed to pain and suffering does not make it any less tragic. It is said that one day we will have a land of our own. We Dalish gather the ancient wisdom in preparation for this. When that day comes, all elves, even those who have forgotten, will reclaim their former glory. I have a question, if it's not too impolite to ask. Do your people regret what they did to ours? I see. That is difficult for our people to accept. Even if only some were in favor of what was done to us, the rest did nothing to stop it. A poet once wrote of them, before the fall of the Dales, Like dragons they fly, glory upon wings. Like dragons they savage, fearsome, pretty things. But you don't need me to quote poetry to you. Forgive me. Perhaps you have some questions of your own. I'm hardly anyone special, I assure you. If I seem different from the rest of my clan, it's only because I was born amongst humans. I came to the Dalish at a very young age, but I've always retained my curiosity about the world I came from. My parents were servants to a human merchant whose caravans plied the southern routes. One day, bandits killed him, and my parents both. I was the only survivor, just a young girl and the bandits took me. I was their servant for several years. It was. The long years of reflection have allowed me to come to terms with it, to put them in perspective. I can only imagine what would have happened had the clan not saved me from them. I owe them my life for that, and more. The bandits killed a scout when the clan passed near their camp. When the clan discovered him, Zathrian came looking for his killers. He followed their tracks for almost a month, and when he finally caught up to us, he fell on the bandits like a terror. No one could stop him. I sat there, and I watched him attack them in a blur, and I reveled in every blow. When he saw me, the fury in his eyes turned to pity. He took me back to the clan, and I've been here ever since. It's possible I might have had some, maybe many. Zathrian offered to take me back, but I had no idea where I was from, and I wanted to stay with a man who rescued me. The clan is my family. Any others out there? It's best they believe that little girl died with her parents. For now, the clan is all I need. My old world could not have offered me all this, and the knowledge of a keeper as well. Perhaps one day, when I am keeper, I might inquire out of curiosity. I'm not sure what lies down that road except pain, however. I am not a keeper. I am Zathrian's first. Though because I was not born into the clan, becoming his first was very difficult. We Dalish have old traditions. The clans come from the ranks of the nobility that once ruled the Dales, you see. The keepers of those old clans have the strongest and purest blood that reaches back to the days of Arlathan. I had to compete against the other candidates for first to be better than them in everything, simply because I was not of the old blood. No, Zathrian told me that time would take away their prejudices, and it did. They became used to me. The clan has placed great trust in me. One day, I will lead them and be the one who secures our future. They have reason. 
Since the days of Arlathan, my people have been either subjugated or homeless. It was our ancestral home long ago when the humans first came to these lands. We were free then and immortal. We did not know how to deal with the humans, and in the end, they turned their power against us and destroyed our Lathen. Our ancestors were enslaved and our culture lost forever. The Tevinter Imperium was a force to be reckoned with. It was ruled by mages with powerful blood magic. Though our Latham fought, they lost. Not to my knowledge, according to the old tales, the human mages sank our Latham into the ground, crushing it beneath the rock. Yes, after a millennium of slavery, Andraste herself freed our people, she who was your maker's chosen. We worship the creators, as we always have. We give thanks to Andraste for her part in our freedom, but we do not worship her or her god. They died, but not of an aged body as other races do. Not until the humans came. According to the legends, association with humans caused us to quicken. Our blood sped, and we began to age. So we avoided them, naturally. And then we were enslaved by them for a thousand years. And in so doing, we all were quickened permanently and our immortality destroyed. Or so the old tales say. In time and with seclusion, we Dalish have lengthy lifespans and they will get longer. Zathrian himself has lived many centuries, though that is unusual even for us. Shemlin, we call them, quick children. I suppose it takes a certain arrogance to look upon another people as children, no? Perhaps we should be more heedful of our own role in Arlathan's loss. Even so, it was a bitter lesson to learn. One we are not grateful for. It requires an individual to prove he is not the outsider we have come to expect. Your own task to help our clan is certainly a step in the right direction. That was our second homeland. Our first was the great city of Arlathan. The Dales came when they were freed from enslavement. Elves everywhere journeyed hundreds and thousands of miles to the Dales, eager to start their lives anew. They called it the Long Walk. They reached the Dales and made it their own. And one day it was taken from us too. And you wonder why we are hostile. Aren't you? You're human. And to many of them, you represent the humiliations our people have suffered for generations. You may not have been personally responsible, but such feelings are not easily overruled by logic or fairness. Oh? That is easy to say when you are not a homeless wanderer of a broken people. It is all we can do to cling unto our past now. Perhaps this may change one day but I believe the humans would have to take the first steps, if they are capable. That was our second homeland. Our first was the great city of Arlathan. The Dales came when they were freed from enslavement. Elves everywhere journeyed hundreds and thousands of miles to the Dales, eager to start their lives anew. They called it the Long Walk. They reached the Dales and made it their own. And one day it was taken from us too, and you wonder why we are hostile. Certainly. Nothing that you could not ask Zathrian himself. He is the keeper of this clan and has been for a very long time. He is also a very good man who has lost much. The Dalish are everything to him, and he would do anything to protect them. He lost his family a very long time ago. I don't know the story, but I understand the circumstances were horrific. As you wish, Darth Shirel.
Uh, hello? I am Kamen, a hunter apprentice. Though I wish I could become a real hunter. I shouldn't be talking about this to an outsider. You wouldn't understand. I suppose there's no harm in it. It's not like you can help me. I've been an apprentice for too long. To become a true hunter, I must bring back the pelt of the beast I killed myself. A boar or a wolf or something. I wanted to hunt in the forest, but we're forbidden to enter because of the attack. But the real problem is Gaina. She's my heart's desire. I have asked for her hand, but she cruelly refuses it. She will not bond with an apprentice, she says, and calls me a child. I am no child. If I was a hunter, I could prove it, but I cannot hunt and... And Gaina will never bond with me. I feel so helpless. <sighs> I shouldn't have brought it up. Just leave me to my misery. You think I haven't thought about this? There's nothing I can do. Wooing? I don't understand. I've serenaded her, and we've talked many times under the moon. But that doesn't matter if I'm still an apprentice. Not to her. No! We've never done anything like that. Never! Of course not. I I'm not even bonded yet. I've never kissed anyone, not like that. Such as? No, I, I couldn't do that. I must kill the beast myself. It is my rite of passage to become a full hunter. I suppose you could, but what good would that do? The situation hasn't changed. But the Keeper said, No, I just can't. What if I encountered a werewolf? I couldn't defeat one of those on my own. The Keeper would know right away if I left camp. Masiranis for the offer, however. That's very kind of you. Oh, what do you want now? I told you everything already. I don't think there's anything I can tell you. My clanmates in the camp would be better at that. Oh, what do you want now? I told you everything already. You think I haven't thought about this? There's nothing I can do. Greetings once again. You spoke to him? What did he say? Oh. I don't expect an outsider to understand our ways, but I just can't bond with Kamen. He's been a hunter apprentice for over two years now, and he's yet to slay a proper beast. Each time he's tried, Something has gone wrong. Perhaps the creators do not wish us to bond. I cannot bond with an apprentice hunter, can I? But what if he never becomes a proper hunter? What will become of our family? Oh, you are right! I have made poor Kamen miserable. No wonder he cannot complete his hunt. Masiranas, thank you. You have helped me put this into perspective. I will go and speak to Kamen. Kamen, I have been a fool. Gaina? What, what do you mean? Have you changed your mind? I have. 
The outsider has helped me to see that I was wrong. I have made you miserable, and I should not have. But what about my hunt? <sighs> I don't care about that. I know you will pass your hunt in time, and we will be happy. Us and our children. Thank you, Gaina. You've made me a happy man. I feel blessed by the gods today. We are both very grateful for the part you've played in bringing us together. How marvelous you are. I am so happy. This is so wonderful. Young love allowed to flourish. Does anyone else feel the urge to vomit? No? Tis just me? Here, take this. It's been in my family for a very long time, but I hope it plays some part in your battle against the Darkspawn. It's the very least we could do. A fine gift. You have my thanks. Hmm. Gaina and Kamen together, I see. Strange that you should take the time to involve yourself in that affair, of all things. I know a few tales. Our clan has passed this way many times before, even when the Shemlin lived in these parts. You wish? I can tell you what I know. It is not a long story. Our legends say that before the Shemlin came, the Brazilian forest was a place of our ancestors that predated even our oldest homeland. The people of the Imperium came here, and gave the forest its name. If they found traces of our ancestors, we cannot say. If they did, those elves were slain or enslaved. We know only that a great many battles were fought here. These trees grow upon the graves of those who fell, Shemlin and elves both. So much death in one place tore the veil into the beyond. The Shemlin know the beyond as the Fade, the place of dreams and spirits. When the veil is torn, spirits pass into our world freely. The legends say that one great spirit possessed the wolf that became Witherfang, who passed its curse of rage onto men and created werewolves. So Zathrian insists. He says that Witherfang does not age as the werewolves do. Witherfang is as much spirit as it is beast thus it is immortal. Perhaps it cannot even be slain. At the very least, it is old and powerful, much as Zathrian himself. The forest is said to be haunted. Spirits possess the trees, the wolves, even the bodies of the dead. They yearn for true life, you see. Who can say what value the Imperium placed on this land? And how many elves died here, in slavery? Even the barbarians, who came to overthrow the Imperium, fought and died on this soil. No one knows. When the Shemlin lived in these parts, the curse would spread anew to a few of them with each passing year. They would run off into the forest, never to be seen again. Eventually, all the Shemlin left. One assumes the werewolves survive, by passing their curse to their offspring. They have had no new blood, until now, that is. 
It is said that one or two have turned already, though the keeper denies it. As for the rest, they will either die or turn, unless they are killed out of mercy. I would rather die than become a ravening soulless beast, wouldn't you? One last warning. The forest is like a thing alive. It changes as it wills, closing paths behind you and opening up new ones. Too many have become lost within, unable to find their way out. Were I you, I would endeavor not to make the forest my enemy. And so I shall. Well, all right.
the Watch Wolves have spoken truly, my brothers and sisters. <sniffs> the Dalish send a human of all things to repay us for our attack, to put us in our place. What bitter irony. Speak to Swift Runner. I lead my cursed brothers and sisters. Turn back now. Go back to the Dalish and tell them that you have failed. Tell them we will gladly watch them suffer the same curse we have suffered for too long. We will watch them pay. Was it not Zathrian who sent you? <sighs> he wishes only our destruction, never to talk. The time for peace is long past. There will be no peace between the elves and we who are cursed. You know nothing, do you? Nothing of us, and even less of those you serve. You are a fool, and we are done talking. Run from the forest while you can. Run to the Dalish, and tell them they are doomed. I do not wish to fight you either, but we cannot trust you. Come, brothers and sisters, let us retreat. The forest has eyes of its own, and it will deal with intruders as it always has. Who, ah, uh, who comes? We were sent to find Witherfang, bring his heart, attacked. I... Uh... Uh. 
and Darren Atitian, Grey Warden. Our scouts saw you approaching and tell me you carry the body of one of our hunters with you. Ah, Dagon. He is wounded, but I think he will live. I'm glad we were able to help him. Thank the Maker we returned to the Dalish in time. He must have watched over this man. Or perhaps his own gods were watching out for him. And perhaps they just know the Maker by another name. Believe what you wish. It seems to me that they should be thanking the Grey Warden more than some absent god. But who am I to judge? Ma Sirenas, your help is appreciated. Come, Letheline, let us take Dagon to the Keeper, and quickly. If we are lucky, we may still save him. I await your command. Of course.
await your command. Get along. No. Oh, this will be good. Oh. Oh. As for violence, oh. sometimes. Oh. I'll try to be merciful. Oh. Defend your self. Oh. 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 Watch out. Oh. As okay, I'm done with you now. How can this be? I sense no curse inside of thee. Could it be instead a lie? There is no need. Why even try? Such chaos is sown within thy wake. Allow me a moment to welcome thee. I am called the Grand Oak, sometimes the Elder Tree. It rhymes? Tis a rhyming tree. One can only imagine what manner of spirit is involved here. And unless thou thinkst it far too soon, might I ask of thee a boon? I am an elder oak and nothing more. Though once I dreamt of a time before, when I roamed the world and howled with pain, not of this world, but twixt and twain. Perhaps I was a spirit then, a wandering thing drawn to this glen. But then that spirit joined with a tree. Since then, a tree is all I be. Of the Sylvans, this is true. They are quite mad, their virtues few. A spirit trapped within a tree, no mouth to scream or eyes to see. A cage of bark, a prison wood, a thing of rage where nature stood. So twisted Sylvan they become, but I am not the same as some. I accept my fated oaken home. I feel no need to rage and roam. I do not know. Why dost thou not? Thy words seem plain. A mundane lot. Perhaps a poet's soul's in me. Does that make me a poet tree? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
It was but a simple jest, a jibe to entertain my guest. I can only speak to what a tree may see. It may not help you, but it is enough for me. That is but a human name. One placed upon this land their claim. A claim they stole from ancient elves, whom they first killed, and were killed themselves. It was the elves who planted the seeds, raised the forest, saw to its needs, but that was all so long ago that they are dead is all I know. A great war, perhaps, I cannot tell. I was not here when it befell, but many deaths here all the same, and with the deaths the spirits came. The spirits entered corpse and tree, and most went mad, as thou canst see. The forest had a spirit of its own, from back when its first seeds were sown. Perhaps she died of grief that day, or perhaps she simply went away. Or perhaps the wares are the ones to blame, for the day she left is the day they came. In the center of the forest the wares do dwell, or so go the tales my fellows tell. But they cannot be followed there. The forest doth protect the wares. Perhaps wares use magic to command the trees. All I know is they move as they please. Perform the boon as I ask, and I shall reward thee for the task. I have but one desire, to solve a matter very dire. As I slept one early morn, a thief did come and steal an acorn. All I have is my being, my seed. Without it, I am alone indeed. I cannot go and seek it out, yet I shall die if left without. Hmm. My wooden skin has some magic, see, and part of it I can give to thee. The forest would see thee as a tree, and so no harm would come to thee. Wilt thou then perform the task? Wilt thou save me as I ask? Go to the east to find this man. I shall await, do what thou can.
How odd. A camp with no campers, complete with fire and warm blankets. Rather inviting, would you not say? Lovely. The elven hunters didn't set this up. How strange. And yet it all just seems so friendly. I want to do nothing but remain. You know, I feel as if I could sleep for days. Do you feel it? It's not quite right. Do not look in the fire. It draws my strength. Perhaps we should sit down, rest. and save some dignity, fool. So be it. Let us end this! I shall do it. As you wish. As you wish. A hungry spirit luring those who pass to their rest and their doom. One might wonder how it learned this trick. No matter, it shall prey on no one else. Lovely. Hello. Right away. Another 
Oh, this should be good. We have done well. 